Hello crochet friends, I'm Graceface and today I thought we'd take a look at some of the first things that I ever crocheted and compare them to some of my more recent makes. I first started crocheting back in the fall of 2020. I don't know when exactly it was, but my best guesstimate is September or August. So it's been about three and a half years since I dove into the fiber arts world. Since then, I've improved a lot as a crocheter, and as of today, I have 16 total designs of my own patterns, including 12 written patterns and 9 video tutorials. I personally think I've come a long way since those very first projects. It feels like forever ago since I made them, and honestly, most of them just got shoved into a box and put away, and I haven't even looked at them since. My apartment is pretty small and I only have so much room. Anything that's not being actively used, I tend to shove away for future use. I gotta prioritize space for all this dang yarn. So I think it's gonna be really fun to pull them all out again and see how far I've come. One of my hobbies other than crocheting is to go thrift shopping. And one day in 2020, while I was out thrift shopping, I came across a laundry basket full of balls of yarn and a crochet dude learn to crochet kit. It was one of those books attached to a bunch of accessories to help you learn how to crochet. Those kinds of kits that were really big in bookstores back in the early and mid 2000s. It came with all kinds of accessories like crochet hooks, a cutting tool, measuring tape, and a bunch of other stuff that you might need when you start crocheting. I decided that this was a sign and the perfect opportunity for me to crochet. You know, I don't believe I ever made any of the projects out of that book now that I think about it. Armed with yarn and my newly acquired crochet hooks, I took to the internet and watched a bunch of videos to learn how to do some basic crochet stitches. And I made this blanket. Or to be more accurate, I started this blanket. <laughs> At the time, I had no idea how much yarn anything took to make, and so I figured a blanket was the perfect thing to make with my big old bucket of yarn. My plan was that I would get to practice learning all my stitches while having something big to show for it in the end. There were a lot of different green shades in my laundry basket of yarn, so I decided to make an ombre green blanket going from dark to light, which you can see the start of here. I had a couple problems, the first of which was that I did not count my stitches at all while I was making this, which is pretty obvious when you look at the sloping sides. I quickly learned that I needed to use stitch markers. For all you beginners out there, when you're working on a project that's flat across, like maybe a sweater panel or a blanket, I recommend you always put a stitch marker in the first and last stitch of your row. Those first and last stitches can be really hard to see and you might miss them just like I did if you're not actively counting. You can see that here on my blanket where it starts off at one width and then starts getting narrower and narrower as I go. You can use stitch markers in lots of other ways as well like placing them incrementally, say like every 10 stitches when you're working on a big project as a shortcut so you don't have to physically count every single stitch. You can also use them to mark color changes or stitch changes or stitch repeats, or even to mark some stitches that might be otherwise hard to see, like with our first and last stitches of the row. I have ADHD and stitch markers have become an invaluable tool for me. I forget literally everything and I am always convinced that I won't. Anyway, the second problem I ran into was not having enough yarn to complete the project. Projects like blankets or basically anything take so much more yarn than you ever realize when you first get started in this hobby. Crochet in particular uses more yarn than other fiber arts like knitting. It takes an ungodly amount of yarn to make a blanket and I had no clue. I just saw a bunch of yarn and was like, cool, I've got plenty, I can make a blanket. It became blatantly apparent I was not gonna have enough yarn as I progressed through the project. This brings me to another tip for beginners, which is to make sure you have enough yarn to make your entire project before you get started. If you're following a pattern, they will typically let you know how much yarn you will need in different colors under the material section at the beginning. Since I was just vibing and crocheting with no pattern, I had no advanced warning. At this point in the project, I thought about just shifting gears and making stripes of granny squares to go in between the different rows of colors. And that was when I made 
this. After making one stripe worth of granny squares, I realized that I still was not going to have enough yarn to complete this project. I ended up getting frustrated and put the project aside assuming I was going to come back to it and moved on to another project. I, as you can see, never did go back and finish this blanket. In fact, this is the first time I've even bothered to dig the thing out since I stored it away. Next, I decided I would go for a faster project and I would try making a blanket out of a granny stitch. In my basket of yarn, I had a fair amount of this rainbow variegated yarn. So I decided to use it alternating with purple and green stripes in my granny stitch blanket. My cat started sleeping on the project in between me working on it. And at that point, I just really lost motivation entirely and stopped working on it altogether. Honestly, I was never really a big fan of the way the colors worked up next to each other. And I really just got bored and lost all motivation. Blankets are such a involved and tedious process that I have never successfully completed a blanket in my entire crochet life. The closest thing I think we can compare the blankets to for a recent make would be my mushroom skirt. This thing has a ton of fabric involved because it is a very voluminous skirt. And the gray yarn that I used for this came from a blanket originally, so that kind of counts, right? I have a vlog about the making of this mushroom outfit if you want to watch that. And I have a new mushroom outfit in the works right now that'll be coming out on my channel very soon. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. And who knows, maybe one day I will find a blanket pattern that I want badly enough to make me endure the struggle and strife of making a blanket, but it hasn't happened yet. I think that brings me to another tip for beginners, which is to start with small projects. It can be really hard to keep your motivation up when you're working on a huge project like a blanket or a sweater. They can take a really long time. And if you're anything like me, you lose steam on bigger projects the longer they take to complete. This is why I think that smaller projects like hats or scarves or washcloths or granny squares or even some simpler amigurumi are way better for beginners. They only take a couple of hours versus the dozens, if not hundreds of hours that you're looking at with some blankets. You get a faster return on your efforts by being able to see your finished item sooner and then compare that to your pattern photos. Then you can see what you did well and what you need to work on a lot faster and then move on to your next project sooner and apply the things that you just learned. I honestly think it'd help you to be a better crocheter faster. Plus, you're going to feel so productive because you'll have this huge pile of makes to show for all of the hours that you spent crocheting. And that is exactly what I did. I started making hats. I made some simple ear flap beanies as well as this simple witch hat. I followed YouTube tutorials for both of these, and there are tons of fast and fun hat patterns available out there. I made quite a few of these ear flap hats and gave them away. I made some other hats as well, but I must have given those away because I can't find them anywhere either. For contrast, here's the most recent hat that I've made. This is a twisted bleeding tooth hat by the Twisted Hatter. These hats are so amazing and impressive. I feel like it's a really stark contrast to the simple ear flap beanies and witch hats that I started with. I think that's when I decided I was going to finally try to make myself a sweater. I followed another YouTube tutorial. I don't remember the exact name of this sweater tutorial, but it was by Hey Carrie. I was very motivated to finish this and worked super hard, got the whole thing done in like three or four days somehow. I was so stoked to have actually made a sweater with my own two paws, but it does have a couple issues. The first issue is it's just too big, which is totally understandable because it is very hard to get sizing right on garments if you're a beginner crocheter. I also ended up making the neck opening too wide. The sweater wants to fall off of my shoulders. At the time, I did not understand how much the yarn was going to stretch as the sweater was blocked and then worn. It would be really easy for me to go back and fix the neck on this sweater. I could just frog the ribbing on the collar and then sew the front and back panel together a little bit more on either side of the neck opening before going back and redoing the ribbing on the collar. 
It wouldn't take me too long, but I've just not had the drive or motivation to ever go back and fix it. Maybe one day I will find the motivation to do so. Let's compare that to the most recent wearable that I've completed, which would be the Sakura vest from Molly Muffers. These two pieces are definitely a completely different style. The vest is very dainty and light and delicate, whereas the sweater is bulky and warm and a little bit more heavy. But I do think that the progress I've made in making my own wearables is really obvious when you look at the contrast between these two items. It's taken me a lot of trial and error to get to a point where I can make a garment for myself that actually fits and I am really proud of all of the progress I've made here. It was around that time that I discovered Amagurumi. I was scrolling on YouTube as you do, and came across a bunch of cool tutorials, started saving them, and eventually dove into the water and made my first amigurumi with this cute triceratops. This is from Club Crochet, and I think it is a staple pattern for beginners of amigurumi. These dinos are super cute, and they're really fast and fun and rewarding to make. I ended up making a bunch of these. I gave most of them away to my friends and co-workers, and this little guy is the only one I have left that I can find. Honestly, he's the thing that kicked off my love of Amagurumi. Once I started making these dinos, I had fallen in love and I pretty much just started making Amagurumi exclusively at that point. I made a ton of Amagurumi after these little dinos and eventually, in May of 2022, I released my very first Amagurumi pattern. This dino is not the first Amagurumi that I ever made, but he's definitely one of the first. I still love this little guy. He's really cute and soft and fuzzy, but let's compare him to my most recent Amagurumi design, which would be for Gregory from Over the Garden Wall. Greg is a lot more detailed and has many more parts than this little cute Triceratops friend, but I do think that it is a good contrast to show how much my skills have progressed. Looking back at these two items side by side, I am really proud of myself. Crocheting is such a fun and rewarding hobby. And looking back, I have made so many things since I started this journey in 2020. The funny thing is, I know no matter how fast I crochet, I never make it to the end of the list of projects that I want to make. I am constantly coming up with new things and adding things to that list. Creating new things is one of the only things that keeps me motivated to keep going in life. So I'm just gonna be over here crocheting my way down my ever-growing list of project ideas. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you want to stick around, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. I upload crochet videos like vlogs and tutorials every other Wednesday, and I love to make new crochet friends. Speaking of crochet friends, follow me on social media. I am Graceface Creates on all platforms. I'll see all of you next time, and until then, happy crocheting.